your dispute, legal dispute, with Christopher Cairns, a leading New Zealand cricketer. He sued you for defamation after you I alleged that he'd been associated with match fixing. I mean, it was taken through the British High Court. He yeah. won, you lost, and he accused you of destroying his career. I agree with that. I, mean, I lost legally, as far as the legal is concerned. I don't want to talk more about it. The Indian Premier League, your baby, yes. the IPL, is now racked with stories of match fixing, of what they call spot fixing, which is another form uh, of I am fixing within yes. the game itself. Um, criminality, connections to organized crime, how could that all happen? It all happened after me, and uh, that's the thing I've been warning about. I've been talking about organized crime getting into the game. I, I, I did not allow it to happen. I was a tough taskmaster. I would not allow any fixing to take place. That's why assassination attempts on my life took place. And I am, I am wondering here, sitting were, out were here. Were you approached by match fixers, by many organized times, crime, by Many times, many, many times, and I did not uh, entertain anybody. And that's the point of fact. That's the point known to the police. And it was very well established. When I, when I ran the ship, the ship sailed, and it was always so moving forward. And we were making good headway. We were getting ratings higher year by year. Advertisers were happy. The fans were happy. Hang the on, calling I'm just was trying to get this straight in my head. Yes. If you were approached by organized criminals and match fixers, you knew who they were. Of course you I say you were prepared to fight them, take them on, and did. work with the police. Why on earth did you not, with the police, ensure that those people were eliminated from your sport? Please understand, the sport is big, very, very big. Organized crime is becoming bigger and bigger in sports. Fixing is becoming the order of the day. And I was very, very tough. In any sport, if you have fixing, that sport's going to die. We should all know that. Anywhere in the world, if there's any kind of fixing, it might as well be WWF. I worked very hard to ensure that no, none of these type of things happen. But anyway, you can never ensure what they do or they don't do. But today, what's come to light in the Indian Premier League, it shows that the administrators, my adversaries, or the people on my board, they are hands in glove. And that is why you'll see the whole country in uproar. You don't, don't talk about me. Let's talk about the game of cricket, what they've done. They've talked about, they've taken the game of cricket to the match, to, to, to fixers and the mafia, and pretty much they're controlling the game today. It's sad today to sit here and watch. You are making extraordinarily um, powerful and, I am. and controversial allegations here. Are you right. telling me that the people running Indian cricket today, to use your phrase, are hand in glove with organized criminals Absolutely. and the no, gambling mafia? No doubt about it. You are remotely serious with these very serious allegations. Yes. Is it not your duty to return to your country and to fight this case and make your stand inside India. I can make the stand from outside India. I, why would I want to go to a country right now and sit on the, in a stand where I know for a fact, I don't know whether you understand what a supari is, but a supari is if somebody's put out, out there a hit on you and, and he or she just gets rewarded when they, they've got that hit. And if that supari, it's like a fatwa in the, in the Western world, in, in the Muslim world, it is something that's sim very, very dangerous that has been put out. Why would my, me and my family want me to risk doing that at this current moment and go out there when I'm not sure that I'll get the protection well, I want. I had the police protection in the first place, which was withdrawn on political whims. Yeah, you, you've I, told me that, but I, I want to be clear about yes. that because it's very important. Yes. You, you're currently I in a fight to get back your Indian passport, which was revoked by the government when yes. you refused to answer questions no, from I didn't the finance to. ministry. I didn't, it well, wasn't one second. discussed that already, but, that, no, no, but that's, I was, that's the way it's seen in No, I was refused but, to attend the offices of the listen, enforcement listen, director. The question is, you're fighting to get your passport back, yes. but you seem to be telling me you will never go I, back to I didn't India. Say, I never said I'm never going to go back. So I said, will you go back? Of course I will go back. When do you go back? When, as, as, when I, as I feel that I have a strong position in terms of understanding what the, or, whether I'm secure or not. If I've got a security, I'm, I'm Everything sure. Everything you've told me suggests you'll never believe you're secure. Oh, no, no, you've no, just one told second, me that powerful current, people inside the country are after you. Some powerful people, they're not going to be in power for long. There'll be other powerful people coming in also. The India also goes through transition in terms of election. We have a democratic setup. It doesn't mean that if the current, some members of the ruling party today are against me, that members of the future ruling parties that are going to come in are also going to be against me. It's very important for me to be able to get protection uh, from, the, uh, from the police in terms of, uh, of what I, for me to go back. Otherwise, why would I want to take the drastic step of stepping into the, into the lion's den for, the, for, for somebody to take a hit on me? I'll tell you what strikes me. The more you talk about 
Indian cricket, the authorities, the connections to the underworld and organized crime. And the more I think about the degree to which the key driver yes. of international cricket today is India with its vast young population mm -hmm. and its hunger for cricket, the more I think is international cricket in a very healthy place when it is so dominated by India and when uh, Indian cricket is, in your view, in such a terrible mess? I think we are in a big problem, uh, in a serious problem, uh, the international cricket is. If you look at the arm twisting being done by India today to South Africa, it's very unfortunate. We have a fixed tours program with each country where we play home and away bases. India has now threatened South Africa that they're going to limit the number of test matches and ODIs with South Africa. It'll, and if they do that, the South African board's revenues will collapse. It'll have a direct impact on the players of South Africa. It'll have a direct impact on, on world cricketing because you have another strong, one of the strongest members of the ICC or the cricketing world uh, not able to survive because India is arm twisting them. And India is doing that repeatedly with other countries and wants to dominate the sport. Either you tow India's line or, or, or you're going to be shown the door out. Yeah, two quick points. I want you to, get, to react to this. Gideon Haig, one of the leading cricket writers in mm -hmm. the United Kingdom, has said, such is the huge proportion of broadcasting corporate cash coming from India, the Indian Cricket Board will, from now on, hold an effective economic veto over all of international cricket. Very, very unfortunate. Is that true? Uh, very true. And very unfortunate. And the only reason is because we have a toothless ICC, in, uh, international, board of, uh, uh, international Board that governs the game of cricket all globally, because they all believe that India, if they do anything against India, India will sit out there and veto anything. And a final question, and this goes to something that's been raised by a number of cricket commentators in, in India itself. They mm -hmm. say such is the degree to which the IPL, the Premier League, has been riddled with corruption and match-fixing allegations, it needs to be shut down, at least temporarily. What do you think? I think I, I don't think it's going to be shut down. What it needs because money is talks. Getting back to the beginning of the conversation, without doubt, and money talks. You started talk. that. I did start that. The Indian cricket board was already very strong. We already ran the global cricket. But what we did is, you can't play it by yourself. I said, I made that very clear when I joined cricket. We can't play by ourselves. We need to have strong partners. We need to ensure that the other cricket board was strong too. And that's what we did. And I did that very well. Our players weren't being paid. Only other players around the world being, weren't being paid. The Indian Premier League was to ensure players get the right value out of cricket and for, the, uh, for what they give to the game. A lot of cricketers now depend on the li of their livelihood on cricket. The other boards all benefited by the Indian Cricket Board launching the Champions League, which I again uh, devised, and everybody gets a big share of it. And that allows them to get a bigger share of revenue than they would get normally from their own cricketing rights. What is happening today, unfortunately, is India has started to use that as, as a leverage of controlling these boards. That's give the me, danger. Give me your best guess. When will you be back in India? I hope not long, longer than a year. I hope not longer than a year. Maybe as soon as March, April, hopefully. Well, we'll talk to you in India if you get there. Lali I'll, I'll talk to you back here in the studio if you want. I'll be back and forth. Well, I'm not going to be stuck. We, we want to see what happens when you get back to India. Of but, course. But for now, Lalit Modi, thank you very much. Thank you for having me on your show. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you.